often, oftentimes I think, okay, there is no culture without land. You know, because land is a part of our culture. And, 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 and a lot of people uh, may doubt that Gavinugu are indigenous or that we have or, or that we entitled to our land. But if we go back historically, uh, it's it's from the time the colony was there, they insist on separation. Because if a Gothma person had to cross a Sarastun to go into 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 the into the land, they had to have a passport. A passport that's on the Sabon bill. That's the Sabon, okay? Yeah, the yeah the Mm -hmm. It's a bit of my mistake. Mm -hmm. They have to have a passport in form of permission to enter that land. That tells you that the British did not consider the different territory a part of their land. It was completely separate. And and today that truth that is still true. Now um we I've talked in, in nauseum about about our qualification under the, the tenants of the Iowa 169. Uh, the, the description of indigenous people that's given in Iowa 169, it fits us to a T. So the case of our being indigenous is also accepted by the government of Belize. And this, and the proof of this is that um, the Rinnegal are afforded a seat on the Indigenous Commission, Indigenous Land Rights Commission, and only Indigenous people are invited to participate in that commission. That again tells us, uh, is, is, is proof that we are Indigenous and that we're entitled to rights as Indigenous people. Uh, thirdly, uh, I must remind our people that where both the land is located, in the Stan Creek and Toledo districts. They, these are the areas in Belize that, that's now targeted for tourism. So all this tourist activity is going on in Garifna land. All the activity of rich people buying property in Belize is in Garifna land. Seems like everything is in Garifna land. And I know for a fact that we, Garinugu, do not yet have the economical power to match any of these entities. Uh, not the cruise lines, not the rich Americans going down there to buy property. We just don't have that kind of money to, to, to okay, buy the Bill, property. So, but... Okay, Bill. So, could, could we have... Could we... I don't want to cut you off. I, I don't want you to um, burn all, all your fire right now. Okay. Hold on my fire. Um, I want, I want uh, Joe to, to come in and, and give it another uh, perspective so that we could bite into more stuff. Joe. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Garifuna is adds value to the entire Central American region. Our history in Central America begins where the war in Yurumi ends. And we were transported from exile from our original land to Central America to the islands where the British control. Um, following that, Garipina had to resettle and they looked for land that they could use and they found uh, much land in the mainland of Honduras and then they radiated to Nicaragua to Guatemala, Belize. Belize in particular, we settled at Dangriga, we settled at uh, PG, um, uh, 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 St. Bike, Georgetown, Barranco, and we settled there when they were not a part of the colony, as Bill said, or the territory. When uh, Garifuna came to Belize on all those trips you hear about in Asad Shoman's book about the 13 chapters. Despite what he says in the book, I disagree with because factually 
the South, meaning the Stan Creek and Toledo were not a part of the lease at the time. So we need to correct the narrative that Garifuna came to Belize, it's not true. In 1859, the border treaty with Belize and Guatemala defined a new border for what would be the territory and then later the colony. And they would move the border of the colony or the territory where it only included Belize, District, Corozal, uh, a part of Cairo, I think, um, uh, Corozal, uh, uh, Orange Rock. They would, and the southernmost part of the of the territory was the Sabon River. The 1859 treaty, Guatemala recognized the new border where they moved the southern border from the Sabon to the Sarstoon and the western border up to where the river bends, the, the, the Sarstoon, we all know that. That, that, that. that is history we all know. Now, what happens north of where the river bends? That is not included in the Guatemala Treaty. And do you know why? Because there was already an agreement with Spain through Mexico to the northern border up to the Rio Honda, and Guatemala recognized that. So Guatemala recognized the western border north of the where the Sarstoon bends because that was already in a treaty defined between Belize and Mexico. And Guatemala further recognized the border moved from Sabun to the Sarstoon. It's important that we understand when that happened in 1859, Garinago had already settled from uh, 1799 uh, is what the Suno report says she found evidence of Garinago, Garinago being in Belize from 1799. So that means we did not go to Belize. Belize came to us when they moved the border from Sabun to the Sarstoon. And it's important because later Judge Conte would say in the Maya Land Rights case that even before the 1859 treaty, those indigenous Maya had rights to their territory. That's an important thing to understand. If the Maya had rights, so did Garifuna. Good. Uh, good joke, good joke. Good, uh, good, good uh, starting point, guys. Good starting point for us. So you guys are uh, like uh, the, the, the messenger coming back to the cave um, to, to enlighten us prisoners because... Um, our history has been so distorted, right? Even when I read um, when I read um, Francis Humphrey's uh, um, revision history of the um, Caribs, there are only like two pages on Garifna history in this revision history, CXC history for our children. Imagine that. And Joe, when you said that um, Garifuna culture gives value to the country, right? The culture itself to me, mm -hmm. is more valuable than the capital. In other words, yes. I mean, the culture itself is more than money. Because when the gold and the silver, the value or appreciate, depending on how the global markets decide they're going to treat third world people, the culture is supreme in value. And people don't want to talk about value because perhaps they don't know how to talk about value theory. But let's get back to the land. Hey, Bert. Yes, go ahead. I don't want you to diminish what I said, my brother. Yes. I didn't say it was a value to the country. I said it was a value to the region. So use the right word, the region. Yes. <laughs> it's the Very whole good. region. Yes, yes. You know how we go with this dialectic, right? So exactly. we try to enlighten, enlighten this uh, discussion to say that we were here, and it's true. Part of the history that I said at 1797, which I would want to put like 1797, it's just three more years before 1800, right? The Garifuna people are already here, circling the areas. So in a, in a, in a nutshell, there was a lot of um, communication in the region because the Garifnas knew the Caribbean region very well and knew where all, all the valuable places were. So the British tried to always distort things. I want to come back to, um, I want to come back to the, 
the um the the question I want to ask is what makes the indigenous Mayan rights to indigenous land and Bill you could jump in here what makes the Mayan indigenous land rights to land different from the Garifuna indigenous land rights? So that's a very that's a, like a tongue in cheek question. So you take it whatever way you want to go with it. You got on mute, Bill. Tech, okay, okay. Technically, yeah, there's no difference. Go. There's there's no difference there, uh, because indigenous is is indigenous. There 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 there, there, there is not gradations on indigenous. Either you're indigenous or you're not. See, but what confuses people uh, is because Maya are also first people. You know, Maya are also first people. Um, the Garina Green Blues are not first people. But because we live within our culture and we live uh, separately and we live autonomously uh, in the area before there was a state, that's why we're indigenous. So, but the confusion with the Maya is uh, because the Maya are first people and the Maya are the only ones that the government of Belize or the educational system in Belize talks about being indigenous and, 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 and talks about in that way uh, people have a tendency to kind of say, well, only the Maya are indigenous, but that's not true. The Garinogu are also indigenous and that's also been accepted by government of, of Belize. So, thank you so much. I guess feedback from you. So, how would you respond to that? You have to unmute, Joe. Yeah, Joe is probably on mute. Hi, yeah. Um, I, I think there is a difference in the approach to rights rather than a difference in the rights itself. The Maya people embraced their rights. The National Garifuna Council, on behalf of Garinago, ignored our right to collective territory. When they had a good opportunity to do so, along with the Maya. So, while legally the same principles apply to both groups, how both groups approached it is far different. And this is an important distinction because what happened as a result is that Garifuna continued to buy land in their territories that they already own. And the government's tenure system, which is, that, which is the question in the whole Maya land rights case, the tenure system, which is the system of land conveyance from one individual to another. The government has shafted indigenous people in Belize by number one, they're not making laws that allow the government to give collective title to people who have a right to collective title. We have a right. But they don't have a law to issue collective license, collective ter uh, uh, title. So if you do not have a law to issue collective title to Maya and Garifuna, then the government will continue to use its individual title system in our territory. And worse, they're going to give people land in Garifuna territory who are not Garenago. Remember, the land, the territory is owned by Garenago. That is not being racist, prejudice, or none of that rubbish. I am talking about individual right to land. There is no distinction in the rights an individual has to his land, nor or, 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 or there's no distinction between that and the collective land title, theoretically. The collective yes. land title, you can do anything you can do in your own lot. Well, okay? I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm glad you, you brought up that um, the issue of collective land ownership, so to speak, right? Collective land. Um, uh -huh. And it, and that in itself would not discourage anybody from individual, right? Ownership, per se. Now, no. 
in, in collective title, Egbert, the difference would be that the government of Belize does not sell you lots because it's like you are on your own lot already that you own and then you have to still go buy it from the government. That's ridiculous. You don't own that lot, but the lot in this case is our territory. Dangriga, PG, Toledo, you know, or, or whatever, you know, whatever. The other uh, uh, villages. So, basically, all these years, the government has been making money from Garenago, buying territory that Garenago already owned. You understand? That's what they've been doing. And worse, they have been selling and giving title rights to people who are not Garenago and who have no rights in Garifuna territory. That's what you call genocide. Yes, I can see it. Uh, I can see it plainly. Let me interject here uh, mm -hmm. and see if I follow follow your. Uh, let's say the front of Sacred Heart, call it, uh, from Sacred Heart Church, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. From Sacred Heart Church all the way to um, the burial ground there in Dangriga, yeah. one politician decides um, a, a tile of this open space, right? Mm -hmm. A tile mm -hmm. of this open space. Uh, let mm -hmm. me just tell it to a Taiwanese um, tycoon. I mm -hmm. put a Taiwanese name on it. And mm -hmm. we, uh, uh, according to the laws, the way how the laws are uh, structured, even though this is the Garifuna town, right, mm -hmm. I could come and just Taiwanese the town, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's no law. Is that what we are talking about in terms of collective land title? No. Well, that is actually a violation. That's actually a violation of the rights of the collective because no one has a right to sell land owned by indigenous people because it's collective land so i'll give you an example so let's say you own that land uh, uh Barry, but let's talk about the pair uh, let's say i own the okay pair. let's say no no you're using the pair if you're talking as a direct you're using the pair you don't own it because i own it too they don't own it too but our society gave you a the sole permission to use it. But when you're done with it, you can't sell that to no Taiwanese. That has to go back to the community, and they will decide what to do with it. And it has to be a Garifuna who controls it. So we are talking That's about land who? tenure. Yes. So, so the about... land tenure of, yes, the, right. of, the, of the Taiwanese owning land in Dangriga is a violation of the rights of indigenous people to have land tenure that means it was not performed in the indigenous way by indigenous people that was somebody else that's the government giving out our land against the law which is a violation and judge contest said as much that the government needs to cease and desist in his ruling when the government accepted the consent decree at the Caribbean Court of Justice, they accepted to cease and desist from giving out indigenous lands, and they have not done so. They continued unabated, except in the Maya territory where the Maya puts them in check. But Garenago have yet to make a claim to the government to cease and desist immediately. So, so um, the pier and the public open spaces in Dangriga are actually Garifuna land. Yes, that's all a part of Garifuna territory, all of it. And when government decided to take the jetty pier and put it in mm -hmm. the um, the lands of the hands of a private firm, he mm -hmm. actually was violating Garifuna indigenous rights. You cannot get any more blatant of violating uh, indigenous people rights than that. You cannot. And, and and by extension, he also violated the Caribbean courts and the Belize Supreme Court with, with, with Judge Conte's ruling. Mm -hmm. I want now. I, I want to push. I want to push a little bit more, um, Joe. If you allow me, also, Bill. So the mm -hmm. fact that um, these violations are occurring in Garifuna territory, Garifuna districts, like mm -hmm. Cienbai, Dangriga, and I also took notes that. Um, there is some way of saying that CN Bight, I saw a map somewhere, I don't know if it was a tourist map, that reworded Lower CN Bight as Lower Placencia. So is that also another way of um, deterritorializing and trying to confuse, mess up the issue before I go on to another question here? 
in terms of indigenous people's um, territory, you would call that a land grab by the government of Belize. A blatant land grab. Now, you know what is the saddest part about land grabbing in Belize from Garifuna, uh, Egbert, and panelists? The saddest part, the most saddest thing to watch is that Garifuna are complicit with the government grabbing their own land. Garifuna are complicit. That's the saddest part of it. Yes, they are complicit. Um, they they actually um, they, they actually talked against uh, getting their land, as will as will uh, eventually prove in the series that we we going to do. Because we're going to talk about not today, but in the future we'll talk about the Rifna response to the invitation to be plaintiffs on the Maya civil rights civil land rights case. But I have I have a question. Uh, the question would be this. Why is the concept of indigenous land or tribal land so hard for Belizeans to accept but they accept it uh, for the Maya? For the what Maya is they accept it they accept for the Taiwanese but some, for some reason the Garifuna are not entitled to those same rights even though we are the same kind of people. Mm -hmm. Right. Good question. I don't well, I know myself. Yeah, and that's the question we need. We need to. And and today I'm not going to hazard a guess because, uh, not because that's not what we're, what we're talking about today. Today we we're talking about poor, um, the, the the right stuff we have to our land. Today we're talking about uh, attempts to preserve our culture. You know, and and the the, the UNESCO proclamation always comes to mind when they they talk about preserving. The most important things Garifuna do. You want me to read the tale? You want me to read the tale? Yes, please. On on May 18th, 2001, the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization (UNESCO) for the first time awarded the title of Masterpiece of the Oral and Intangibles Heritage of Humanity to the Garifuna Language, Dance, and Music of Belize. The intangibles, heritage of humanity. So how can we preserve the intangibles without tangibles? That's a good question. Uh, <laughs> that is a very good question. Yeah, it's like it's like what Steve Pulse pose in the, in one of their songs. How can we sing in a strange land? You, you know, b b because I, we keep talking about uh, the culture preserving it. But we need to think about where is this culture going to be preserved? You know, where? You know, and, and there are those that, that, that hold the idea that, okay, if, if we get individual land titles, if I get my own land title, then, when, when, then I can benefit from my land title economically. But even though that concept is true, but in effect, as Joe has explained, it's illegal. It's illegal to sell tribal lands. And the proof that it's illegal to sell tribal land because not one inch of Maya tribal land has been sold. And maybe Marta and Robert have some questions for the panelists. Uh, I am looking, I'm listening to all the um, the comments and the discussion. Um, I tend to somewhat a little bit differ with um, the way how they look at um, the rights of indigenous people. I believe that both of us are indigenous, but our reason for claiming in the indigenity is somewhat different for the Mayas they look at um for the Mayas they look at the, the Maya site as their reason to say that they have been in Belize for many many years before Belize became Belize for Garinago we are still we still have to decide as to what our main reason for our indigenous and we have been here from before the Belize became Belize. We have been in this region many, many years, even before the So there is no excuse for the Belize if we are indigenous to this region. 
her indigenous community. And we need to stick with that. To me, Martha just gave us an example of the self-destructiveness within the Arifina, uh community. Why would they argue against their own best interest? The question has already been answered. The Inter-American Court of Human Rights recognizes Garinago as being indigenous to the Central American region and the Caribbean exactly. in the lawsuit that Ofrane uh, took uh, uh, against the Honduras government. The Inter-American Court of Human Rights is a branch of the Organization of American States. The Organization of American States, in turn, belongs to the United Nations. So, Arenago are very self-destructive when they have that kind of attitude that Martha talks about. The question has been answered. Yet, it's Garenago who are debating among themselves that they are this or they are that. It's a legal matter at this point. Were we there before the border moved from Sarstoon, I mean from Sibun to the Sarstoon? If so, the answer is yes, we are indigenous. Exactly. Yes, so, so, actually, um, we, actually, we extended the border for Belize because it's exactly our, our presence. Our settlement. Mm -hmm. Belize our would presence, have yeah. From the Rio Hondo to the Cebuans, it wouldn't have extended all the way to the Sarstoon. Exactly. Because the Mayan. Yes, they have visited this area. Yes, they have settled in this area as well. But they don't settle. They don't stay in one location for a long period of time. They simply move. Right. Right. Well, so, yeah. or, or they're never on the coast. They weren't. Yeah. And, and so it's the relationship. They are usually inland, as inland as well. Right. I will. I will also say that a more fundamental reason is that the relationship between Garenago and the British in trade had been established strongly. So the British had a relationship with the Garenago, but we were not a part of the settlement at the time because Belize went in several stages. It became a settlement, then it became a territory, then it became a, 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 a colony. And finally, independence. Okay, right. everything did not happen at the same time. Yeah. It took time. Now, the British and Garenago, yes, we were fighting each other in Urume, and we still met each other in Central America because why the British took us from Urume, where we were fighting for our land, and brought us here, where we we're no trouble to them in Urume, and we had to radiate from Honduras and go all over to find land to work. And to be productive and to you know feed our families etc and in doing so what did we do with the colony and by the way in her book nancy what's her name nancy the uh, uh, gonzalez acknowledges that she believes that the british used us to gain the territory exactly against stan creek and, and Toledo. that's in the book that's not me just saying that out loud, guys. Nancy Gonzalez said that in her book. And yeah. every scholar who has who who has some good instincts, they look at everything that happened and they know the British used us to gain territory originally from Spain. Yes. In yes. that in their treaty. Yeah. Is it? Because so, they haven't stopped us, we would have extended beyond the start from all the way to our um, Pekin. And that's why, Marta, I say, and, and the evidence is clearly there in history, we did not go to Belize. Belize came to us. It has it, always been that way, and we need to stop believing the lie that we went to Belize. We did not. Very good said, Joe. Okay. So, I said that to clarify that same point as well, Joe. Thank you. Right? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I think our our only hold up now is that ever since Garinigo have been in Belize, 
uh, none of our leadership have approached the Belize government just to tell the government, hey, we know we're indigenous, like the Maya, and we, and we demand equal treatment. And that's yeah. all we need to do. And that, but, and that wouldn't be, that, that has more precedence than the recent Equality Act that they were trying to push the other day. They should yes. be pushing the equality as it concerns mm -hmm. our land. 100,000 mm -hmm. acres of land, I understand, and counting more, including one or two keys, belong to the Garifuna people, as the Garifuna people. Correct. Now, if we were to follow up on Convention ILO 169, um, Joe, what would be some of the mechanisms that we would have to implement? Well, one thing I can guarantee will not happen, Egbert and panelists, is that the government of Belize will not say, okay, Garifuna, you're right, here you go. You understand? That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that is something I guarantee you will not happen. Which means we know that. We know that. Which means that you must take this in front of judicial review. There is no choice. Now, I know that during the time uh, when the when the uh, UN made the proclamation, you had several uh, the the Uni UNESCO UNESCO. Uh, had asked several colleges and universities, the law schools, to adopt indigenous people and help them fight for their land rights. And it was a very effective program. Yes. Yeah, I know about it. From which graduated, the Maya graduated from there successfully. One of the biggest failures of this program was the Garifuna. Our people, our Garifuna leaders, never accepted the help from Colorado, uh, University of Colorado at Denver, to help them take their uh, issue to court, land rights issue to courts. Instead, the National Garifuna Council took a position that they would not engage in, in lawsuits against the government of Belize. And at the time, it was a friendly political party to the National Garifuna Council. So instead of looking at the rights of the collective, they looked at the rights of the, at the interests of the National Garifuna Council only, and not who they represent. And I think it was uh, one of the greatest error that the NGC has ever made uh, against the people that they they're supposed to be um, uh, uh, leading. And, and they put it on paper in the form of the affidavit. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk mm -hmm. about that affidavit another time. Um, not mm -hmm. today. Um, um, so, I wanted to um, say, Joe, that uh, yes, the government, and I don't like using the word government, because we are the government, but I want to um, say that uh, the administrators, right, um, who the people sometimes think are uh, have a divine right, like a divine king and queen, um, those administrators are not divine, you know, um, laws change, right and the laws uh, in the past were uh had that women couldn't vote well that had to change at some point in time the law had to change to admit women into you know as voting uh, having voting rights as citizens and um, and also the equality act that everybody got excited and so mad about a couple weeks ago was supposed to change to uh, accommodate you know the uh, minority uh, citizens that have a particular choice um, of uh, socialization so um laws had to change change uh, laws have changed to allow for indigenous people's full rights and not only full rights um, as rights per se but compensatory compensatory just compensation for the injustices that were in, you know institutionalized by the system the english and the spanish so joe um, you talk about um going to get um, some kind of judicial redress and uh, going to the courts and um, mm -hmm. the the the, the Belgian courts is based on a british system um mm -hmm. Um, and uh, you know, we are living here as citizens in the U.S. Um, what do we do? Because these guys don't give up power and they will not... They, 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 I'm getting I'm get, a little annoyed because recently I heard that one man, one man in Belize 
was applying for 40,000 acres, one man. Mm -hmm. And here we are arguing about 100,000 acres for how many people in Dangrega or the country of Belize? How many are you going to in the country of Belize? Well, I give it about 40, 50,000. Okay, so 100,000 acres for about 50,000 Garifuna people. But one man yeah. can go into the land's office and just uh, put up with two notes and say, I want this illogical in terms of value of land. We are talking about the value of land and the value of culture. What's wrong with these people? What what is what what is I think even more fundamentally crazy is the ignorance of the Garifuna leaders to assert the rights of collective Garifuna to their territory. This is what's very, very puzzling to me. Why would you allow the government to sell your people land that they already own? Right, I understand in Hopkins, someone who I know wanted to buy a piece of land and they're saying that this land, this lot, a lot, is uh, uh, some so many uh, tens of thousands of dollars in Garifuna territory. Which Garifuna is going to afford that when they don't own the lot already? Garifuna own it. You see? And this is my concern. So now our leaders can stop this from happening. But no, they come up with all kinds of reasons why they can't go to court and assert our rights through a court of law. Martha. <laughs> I, I, I am just thinking about this topic and I don't really want to talk as much about this um, but my question my question is before I even go to my question there is something if we keep, keep on talking about Garifuna leaders Garifuna leaders we know that we are lacking leadership we know that for a fact because leaders are the ones that will, will tend to do whatever it takes to improve the quality of life of the subordinates, of the people you're leading. So I don't really see leadership in that sense in our country and in um, NGC, as others would say. I, I am looking at where, what, where do we go from there? What do we do next? To ensure that we, to ensure that we make our preservation, make sure we take things for our children and their children to come. Well, well, you, you, you know, Martha, I love the question. Go ahead, the, the, there is no I government, know. there is no government that will have two treaties with one entity for the same reason. And I say that to say um, that that nobody else can approach the Belize government with, with this issue because they already have a treaty in the form of an MOU with with NGC. So that MOU, that treaty, would have to be notified before any other group um, could, could take it up with the country. See, and that's what the problem is. Because well, there's well, no, there, well, no um, uh -huh. yeah, Go ahead, go ahead, um, Bill. I want, I want to, I want to, I want to explore that a little bit more. Uh, I want to explore that a little bit more. Uh, don't, don't put a cap on the, don't, don't cap the bottle yet and call it a uh, sign seal deliver. And uh, I want to push back on that. But let me hear Joe respond to that. <laughs> Go ahead, Joe. Um, look at, look at it like this, right? If your leader neglects their responsibility and their duty to you then you can go ahead and take up the mantle after you have cleared some legal hurdles now for instance people will say to me oh that you like talk and then you know you know you know that do nothing that we really had to do this that we really had to do that you hear that all the time and what I am I'll saying talk. then yeah yeah what I am saying is that for me to be effective in a, in a legal court in Belize, I have to be somebody who is already living there and I am affected by the violations that the government is doing. I am not living in Belize, so they will say I am not affected, even though the second I get home, I am affected. Because that's for me as well. 
I am from there. I am Garifuna, and I have an interest as well. Yes. However, legally, I cannot clear the hurdle that I have any interest in this violation that the government is doing. So they'll say, case dismissed. Now, suppose we have some brave people like the Maya. Yeah? So the Maya um, uh, uh, Leaders Alliance, MLA, they could not bring a lawsuit to Belize because the organization is not affected, but the individuals who live there are. You understand there's a difference between an organization versus the individuals who are affected. So they had to have some individuals put their name for the lawsuit and then they were able to go forward and then the Maya Leaders uh, uh, Alliance signed up as an interested party. Now, maybe the court might recognize me as an interested party. Yes. But I cannot be the one to bring it and head it because I am not feeling the violations. You okay. are who live in Belize. So that's what we need. So I think I think that answers uh, Marta's question uh, and concern. And um, but I also uh, think that at the next time, um, uh, Brother Bill, um, I want to explore this, the, the issue of value, Bill, um, um, and uh, Joe, you know, the value of land. I mean, 100,000 acres. If the intangibles, right, that UNESCO has so, um, you know, um, much adored, you know, the intangibles as our music, dance, and, and so on, are to be of any value then we have to look at the tangibles and i think the tangibles is in the land the sea the keys and so on without the, mm -hmm. the securing of the hundred thousand acres plus right um all the pharmaceutical um benefits that could come from our you know the forests and land and who knows we might have gold and uh, diamonds in that land and who knows what is in that land mm -hmm. Uh, and that land has nourished our ancestry so much so that we have, you know, um, students from abroad going into Belize and uh, looking for particular, right, particular plants that are have been given great value unbeknown to us, unbeknown to us who are still in the prison and uh, mm -hmm. the prison, the prisoners in the cave. And it's people like Joe and uh, Marta and uh, Bill, Flores and Robert, with this medium, who are giving us some light to make sure that our indigenous rights within the jurisdiction of, you know, within the law. We are, our laws, our rights are being violated, period. They were violated 1700s, 1800s, 1900s, and the 2000s. And continue to be violated. So what will we do? Bend over? and allow them to continue violating our laws, our rights? I think not. Well, that's exactly what we've been doing. That's been our approach, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that in, has in been the current, our approach. In the current state of things, uh, go from the man, uh, now to fishing, you got to get a license. Which you know, is ridiculous. And, and mm -hmm. You know, and, and when, when uh, uh, um, Egbert was talking about mentioning the resources just now, uh, I started thinking about the ocean, the, the sea, uh, uh, um, uh, the fish in the sea, the barrier reefs. I mean, all, all these, all these, these things are ours. Yeah, you know, but, but these, how do you manage things, those things? Is yeah, there some these kind things, of a treaty that, that where gives you the right to manage your environment, Bill? That mm -hmm. Yes, because the, the, the conference of uh, biological diversity talk, talk about things like that. That too, that too is part of our tangibles. You know, the, 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 that is a part of what UNESCO cited. That the sea and the ocean plays a big role in our way of life. You know, that's a problem. Without the sea, there is no Garifuna. I don't know if you want to have a musical break, Marta, or you have any more mm -hmm. questions, or you want to make any announcements, recognitions of people listening. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to do that now? Go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Comments. I think we are agitating each other, and we might go a little bit beyond the um, the normal time. No, we want to hear the comments. We want to hear the comments. <laughs> Let's hear the comments. <laughs> we want yeah. to see that. But you guys, man, you're touching on some really touchy topic. Because yes, I we like touchy have... topics. <laughs> I don't want others to feel like we're in a slumber. 
No, we will not. Our, our right to see and this license and all of that is actually taken away from us or marginalizing us. Yes, we know that. Right? Yeah, because just recently we are traditional fishermen and we do conservative fishing. Yes. Right? However, yes. some of our traditional fishing grounds has actually uh, been turned to a um, reserve and our people don't get a license to go and fish no more in these areas. But you find those other people from other parts of the country get a license to go and fishing in this area. We deserve a special license. But that's an yes. uphill battle because we will address that as time goes by. I'll go to the comments and I'll have you think about that. Yeah. Thank you. The first comment comes from Andrew Lawrence Young. He said he's watching. Jennifer Miranda said good day to all. She also said, very broken up, coming in. She said it's getting better a little. Um, I have Martelina who said, good evening, Robert. Anthony, um, Anita Lewis said, watching from Belize City. Very interesting topic. Jennifer said, very interesting history from what I was taught in school all the years ago, hoping the new generation is listening. Good. Felix Good. Miranda said, he said, William Thomas, Commissioner of Land in Rome, after 1783, reported to Britain that these black Caribs are indigenous to these parts. The Garifuna has been indigenous before the Garifuna got to Central America. What is your take on that? Agree or disagree? I agree. Well, I, I, you know, uh, those kinds of details for me, um, uh, I just look at the ruling of the Inter-American Court of Human Rights. The question has been answered. They have declared it so, OAS have declared it so, UN have declared it so. It's a part of international law, so the local law must recognize it. So nothing else for me can get in the way of that. Unless we want to argue, we want to take proof that no, we're not indigenous to Belize. I don't know who will feel good doing that, but yeah, you know, you're welcome to try. But it, the question's been answered. Thanks. That's right. Okay, Maurice Terreira said, great discussion. You're correct. So what are we going to do about the situation? Can I hear from you guys? Well, if Marish is uh, very concerned about indigenous lands and he thinks that uh, our right to collective um, land ownership is viable um, in relationship to precedence. So precedence has been set, right? The, Methan the, the Mennonites had it. The, the Mayans have it. Um, a few other people have it, Taiwanese have it, and um, then he could be one of our representatives to the courts of uh, Belize, because we want to take this up to the courts of Belize, and he could sign on and be one of our uh, delegates, and uh, we will raise the money and get the attorneys to, to assist him with the procedure. That's what we want to do right now. I love it. Every time I always come on the show, he puts you guys on the spot. I yes, think I like your time. Yes, I think I love it too. I want him to come and step up to the game. Yeah, I, and now we'd like to return the favor by asking him to be a plaintiff. <laughs> Felix Miranda say, he said, Garina Gould declared indigenous in Europe long before they were exiled to Central America. Maurice said, do you guys realize that there is no leadership to address tangible Garifuna or Garina Gould issues? Well, I do see uh, Maurice as a young leader coming up. I, I, I noticed, I've heard, I've seen, you know, he has a soccer team going. Um, he's uh, doing some very, very wonderful things. And I want to encourage him to, to keep up the good work. Uh, I will encourage him. He's a young man. He has a uh, vision. And, and if you listen, I could give him a few tips. Okay. 
Jan Arana, Jan Arana said, protest for moving forward, collective land rights. Demarcation, occupation, and administration. What is your take on that? My take sure. on it is that the National Garifuna Council were given a grant of about, I think it's a hundred thousand Belize dollars, which they pledged to match a hundred thousand Belize dollars, and they would engage in the exercise of mapping out Garifuna territory. What they will do after they have mapped it out, I don't know. What is their process for mapping out the territory, I do not know. I think that the exercise, if it continues uh, right now, has been continuing without us being informed. But one thing I do know, if they continue this exercise based only on the information in the, the lands department of Belize, they are doing a disservice and they need to do more because the history of the use says that we use Ternef Island to go and catch Bokatora. We use some of the um, keys uh, in our Duluth ceremony. We used a lot of the waters along the entire coast of Central America. So you have to include all that history and you need to also ask the elders as their testimony how they in the past used uh, the land and how what their parents and grandparents told them about how far they went, what they did there, when they get medicine. There is a lot to do than just look at some maps on a government on the government uh, uh, lands it lands uh, department. That just is not sufficient to determine exactly where our land's borders are. Well, I would just add, uh, what is the criteria for the demarcation? Well, that's a good question. I don't question. know. I don't, I don't have criteria. any information. Go ahead, Marta. Okay. To demarcate your land, you actually Maybe. have to come up. Yes, you have to come up with the, um, the, the boundary that you're claiming. And tied on to reasons, you have to have um, history, historical facts as to why you're claiming those boundaries, and and for each and every one of our communities. So, so you're talking about a uh, um, historical fact. You, um, you have to have proof of historical facts as to why you're claiming the demarcation or so whatever demarcation you have for each community. Yeah, because first, you know, we got to have that archaeological investigations. Yes. Yeah, it has been done. It has been done. I'm claiming all the way to um, to Grass and all the way to Melinda for the boundary of Danbriga. Right? I have yes. to have proof as to why I am claiming that all these lands are the part of Danbriga. And I also need to attach um I need to attach facts for my proof. So if I am saying, okay, the reserve, I am using the reserve. Because some of the reserves, the land there, have been issued out to our um, grandparents after they went and worked um, digging Panama Canal and Second World War. Yes. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I will get back showing those lots that have been um, divided, stemming all the way to the grass. And with that, I need to attach the list of the names, those who went to Great Panama Canal, and those who went to World War II. Right. And you need to get some historical facts from the parents and grandparents, some of the stories, so I will attach some of that to, to um, all of that will be a part of my claim for the demarcation of that data. I have Martha, I, I want, uh, Martha, I really want to thank you for bringing those points up because I think I think they're very they 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 they're very important. 
I mean, th th those points, those points that you you, you um, just make, you know. So I just thought I'd say. I that. want to say this, however, it, while I am demarcating, busy doing one thing, the government is busy giving individual titles away to the same land I'm demarcating because I did not get a cease and desist as Judge Conte had ordered. Yes. So that's my concern. So, if you are going down that road, that's the first thing you need to do. You need exactly. to through the court and notifying them and make sure you reinforce about the seizing and the, um, the seizing on the issuing of land within our communities. Because years ago, our um, parents, they used to have a lot of land committee. In each Garifuna community, um, community who used to issue land, who was responsible for that. But I can't tell you what year that was demolished. That's very good, very good information, Marta, because I think um, your, you know, informal, make a call it informal testimony right here, gives a lot of thoughts for us to proceed in how we are proceeding with this discussion right now. Um, and um, so you're giving us a lot of uh, information there, which uh, we could use to go back and check some records. Yeah. Right, because this is not in our history. Uh, gentlemen, I don't know how the time looks. Um, St. Germain, how much more time we have, Marta? We have 15 more minutes. Good. Do you have any okay, more announcements? About 20 more minutes. But I have a few more comments to continue. Yes. Um, this is one from Wellington Ramos, excellent show by Garifuna people. Who say Rankin said no respect to the panel on Habako. Darina go thumbs up. Emilia Kama said perhaps the finishing association should be given the authority to issue a license for outside fishermen. I disagree. Now, now, the finishing association, I think you want to say fishing, fishing. Mm -hmm. fishing association. association should be given the authority to issue a license for outside fishermen. Why? No. That's my no, question. No, I, okay, no. so I have, I have a piece, uh, Joe, let me go. Many mm -hmm. years ago, I got very, very upset. The government, uh, um, let me not use that word again, because we are the government. <laughs> the administrators gave out license to either Honduranian or Guatemalan fish boat. Do you remember that time? The trawler. Yes. Yeah. The trawler came into our shores and it from PG all the way to front of Dangriga, raking the bottom of the Bingham Sea bed killing our fishing industry so i don't want i have no faith in what it depends on what how this association is made up right and that needs to be assessed and investigated that's my answer to that go ahead joe okay i can respond to that based on what is legal versus what is illegal I want to say again and iterate that Garifuna have territorial rights. And as Bill pointed out, that includes the sea. So we have rights to fishing and we have rights to manage the sea as we have done before Belize's border moved from the Sabun to the Sarstone. And even then, pre-colonially, we use the entire coast of Belize because our fishermen used to go all the way north to the Rio Hondo. So now they're saying that now that the border has moved from Sibun to the Sarstone, that now you cannot continue to do what you were doing, what your culture taught you to do and survive. And now we are controlling it. So now you have to do what we say, get a license from us. Oh, and guess what? When we give out license, you who were there before we came, you're not getting any. And then we are going to in any way, in any way condone that 
and tolerate it instead of fighting the violation, then we need to really take a second look at our approach. The only approach we need to do is to counter the violation in our rights to fish and to manage the waters. That's what we need to work on. And, and Joe, and may I add, um, the, the, the legally, the only organization that has the right to give permission to fish in those waters is the NGC. Well, I'm not sure if legally, because uh, that proclamation has not been made. There seems to be some kind of relationship going on and some kind of um, um, non-public, right? There's no public disclosure. And uh, I don't know what kind of secret society we're trying to build in this community. Democracy is built on open and public debate and discussion and consultation. If things are being done in secret, then I don't think it holds. I don't know what you guys think about illegal the judiciary. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Martin. Uh, uh, let me explain why I say why I said legally, um, because legally the only represent the only representative of for the Reno Green Belize is the NGC. Well, I need to see that in a, in a, some port of. Uh, well, there's the MOU. Yeah. There's the MOU, and and there was and there was that secret relationship with Said Musa. So what is the now, MOU? What is MOU? Could you spell that out? Uh, um, memorandum of understanding between um, the, the, the between the NGC, the the representative of of Garino Green Belize, and the and the government of Belize. And I, I, and I'm going to send you a copy of that MOU as soon as I find it. That's true. That's true. That's true. And I I am aware of the MOU. But let me just, for me, I'm a factual person. And I make decisions based on facts. Yes. What information do I have? When it comes to that, the entire course of beliefs have been divided into four NGOs under the management of four NGOs. Now, the northern part of this country is managed by Sartinena. After Sartanena, we have WCS who manage more in the central. Then we have C Belize who manage from in front of Dandriga all the way to in front of Placentia. And after C Belize, there is five that manage the southern part all in front all the way to they are um, food. Okay, may I address that please when we talk about facts? Okay, uh, while those are facts that you have MOUs with these various organizations, again, um, um, uh, Martha, we Garenago have never asserted our rights to the entire coast of Belize, to use the entire coast of Belize uninterrupted. That means exactly what I just said. We have a right to the entire coastline of Belize, and we have a right to be informed if they are going to put someone else in charge of this part, in charge of this part, in charge of this part. But we have failed to properly assert our rights in anything that has to do with collective Garifuna rights. Anything. And I defy anyone to show me different. This is where we need to correct ourselves on the road where we are. We need to go back to that fork where we took the wrong road and adjust and take the correct road and assert our rights legally. While those are facts, that you know this one uh, has rights to uh, control this one or this one manage this one it is also a fact that our rights as indigenous people who use the coastline is also being violated when the government did that so i think i think that uh, that's very important to, to point out joe right and um, mm -hmm. that in that um there 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 our interests as a collective people is being denied and disenfranchised in the benefit of private right uh, interests and I, I want to look at the ngos as having their own private individual you know 
missions, which which is not right. I think the indigenous right supersedes individual rights. Yes, it's, but it should be so. That's yes, granted that it should be like that all day long. But th that's not the way it is. Like Martha, I like the facts too. That's not the way it is because I I want to see what NGC has done for the collective collective rights and the assertion of collective rights to date i'd like to see that please very good we're moving um, along moving good. along i wanted to um perhaps okay. yes robert i have something i want to mention because it's concerned to back and forth over this issue that ngc the legal representative of the girls some people in the league yes no I can remember a couple years ago when I was working in a week block. Yeah. And there was only one big farmer association in a week block. And as you see, I had to deal with a lot of issues over this association thing. And I advised the people in Bano to say to the association thing that they want to have another association for they have an emoji as well with the government that don't allow them to. But when the matter was taken to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court has ruled that you can't tell that people who put their way to represent them or who to represent them. So yeah. it's like that people are able to take NGC to vote. Yes. So that you can get an understanding that they can't vote the government that people who have NGC to represent them. Yes, exactly. And there are other organizations who can also represent them. That's it. That's where I wanted to go with that. That's where I wanted to go with that, Robert. And I'm glad you mentioned that. That um, the fact that it's just like when a trade union says they represent these workers, another trade union could come in and and vie for you know for representation, right? In uh, exactly. if if that if that other union is not um, up to up to up to mark. But I wanted to put this um, in this this discussion of all that right. <laughs> Yes, yes. Very good, very good point, Robert. Very good point. I think we are coming to. So, um, yeah, the issue of land is very important to depopulation, right? Uh, the agenda of the Europeans in terms of globalization and the, 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 the history of the Garifuna people. Um, is a testimony to to some of these violations. We've all been been we've been targets of um, of war, you know, depopulation. We have been targets of deterritorialization. Uh, but uh, the Jews also had to like take a stand. The Palestinians, right? Um, we have a few Palestinians in our midst. They 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 have gone through this land issue too. Um, and so we we Garifuna people, we have to stand up. We gotta stand up and face, you know, demand our, that our human rights be protected. Yeah. Let me continue, Jen. I ran, I ran a thing. In the demarcation, the concept of outer landscape has to be used, which includes the land, river, sea, tangible and intangible. Correct. He also said, cultural landscape, people, land, sea, practices. Andrew Lawrence Young said there is a lot of Garifuna attorneys. Where are they? They should step up. Good luck with that one. Good luck with that one. Maurice said I would 100% be a plaintiff on Garinabo issue. Hope you guys are serious. I see you yesterday. <laughs> And see your sister. This is a good step. Said, mm -hmm. when was the phone given to NGC? I think it was last year for the 19th. Yes. Uh, uh, we don't yes. know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Started the process. Yes, they have started the process. I think they are almost two. That's the reason we call for the thousand, hundred thousand acres. Something of that sort. Um, yes. Is the information public? I think so because I know that you people have access to the information. No, no, you know something, Martha? Listen, here's my issue.
Uh, yes, I saw I saw a uh, a post on Stan Martinez's page. I didn't see anything on the NGC Facebook because NGC Facebook sometimes I am allowed to look, sometimes I'm not. Um, so to me, to me, the NGC have the onus to communicate with their people. We should not have to go look and seek and search where they hide it. And I'm just saying that in a very sarcastic way because I don't think that they do a good enough job in communicating with the masses. We should not have to go seeking and, and looking and can't find the information. It should be readily available to the public. That's my opinion. That's an opinion, and that's how I stand. Well, Joe, I think... Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, who is in charge of the process at NGC? I think um, it was Mr. Martinez, Spanish Martinez. He was the person who was working closely to fix that. My concern is accountability. If they have not done their due diligence. Mr. Price, from her comments, she said, um, this is the NGC headquarters office is Dan Riga, or contact them via Facebook. They are very responsive. Then yeah, but Maurice, I want to say to Maurice, Maurice, I'm sorry, buddy, but sometimes they pick and choose who they will allow to see the site and who they will respond to, and that's not professional. Melissa also asked if it is possible to form a committee in the U.S. to ensure the weekly conversation don't end after the live. What more can we in the U.S. assist if there is none formed at this time? Well, I'll tell uh, Marta to um, look up the Garifuna Nation. Um, the Garifuna Nation is under new leadership. Um, I am the president. And um, we're looking, we're looking to to take this thing to new heights. So look us up and join us in our different uh, meetings. We have different committees dealing with different things. And Joe is one of the head knockers when it comes to land and human rights issues. <laughs> Thank you very much, Martha. <laughs> okay, Oliver said, um, great discussion point from the panel as a real estate professional would like to see a fund established to purchase property from any Garina group who had to sell their land due to financial hardship. Well, Joe, I think that's something we need to discuss at another time. That's uh, mm -hmm. that uh, land fund, right? That land fund. I think mm -hmm. there's a there's a technical name for it. Land fund. I'm not too sure if that's the technical name, but that's something we should look into. Yeah, Emila Taman said, "I am referring to the entity that was formed in Dangriga Town regarding fishing in our area." So I think. Property or association, something of that. Yeah, but um, no, no part of the world has come an association is responsible to give out the light. No, what I believe in is that the association can be part of that committee. You understand me? Because the authority is always with the government department. Right? No, I'm not saying that what is recommended is a bad idea, yeah. but we have to look at the reality. Because there's a lot of things that need to be fixed in our water, and so we need our own people to be observant. And that is why it is important to have the association to be a part. I think they need to be a part, not to own the observer, but to be a part in the decision making. So that's one that we can look at as well. Maurice, I will have a show on the ground needs to be educated. Simulations and mobilized on our accountable issue. There is a little consciousness on our issue. Yeah, Felix Miranda said, 
We market and also use markers such as cream, mango, cashew, etc. that you know were brought to substrate by humans. Some, mark, some markers are established in South. There is a Jogosan that marks Kibu as a Garifuna and Teshwal territory. Wow. I want to hear that song, guys. Me too, me too, me too. Yeah, yeah. Um, Lee Garcia said, I am tuned in all the way from Brooklyn, New York. Mar um, Melissa replied to Marie. Herrera, unfortunately, most people will not get involved until it impacts their daily lives. We are reactive, not proactive. I hope we mobilize before we are at the point where we will not be able to effect change. Very good. Well, in terms well, of the are in violating of international laws and the treaties and conventions, the need has pledged to abide by a court action that has avoided that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We don't have a, um, a little site there that you can go to. And Gary Global, Dan Riga. What do I say to my children when they ask me why we did not fight for the tribal land? Well, we will show at some convenient time the affidavit um, that uh, nailed us to the cross in terms of pursuing collective uh, land ownership. That affidavit is uh, somewhere in our files, and at an appropriate time, we will uh, let the uh, Garifna nation the Garifuna nation out there know why is it we were not so much involved in the collective land rights issue we have an affidavit and we'll share that at perhaps another show right joe yeah yeah correct, we also correct. Can the export from the article the national Garifuna council received a check from belize 100,000 from the global environmental facility grant program implemented by UNDP for a project entitled for a project entitled Empowerment of the National Garifuna Council towards landscape and seascape stewardship. That's very um, interesting. Very interesting. So, I think Marta, I think Marta, this, yes, yes, very, very important. Yes, very important. Yeah, Molly said, well, um, that's why we have to raise the awareness, we have to raise the awareness now. Andrew Lawrence Young, my brother and sister, there is a lot of Garifuna educators in Belize in education. Many, many years and it's time to stop. Garinago must assert our territorial rights and our collective rights to run our own community. We must get a cease and desist to stop the government from giving out titles in our territory, even as they are performing this uh, land uh, measuring, land surveying. Of the, of the territories. I do not see the sense in doing that if you have not gotten a cease and desist from uh, the government giving out our territory. It continues unabated. It has not been dressed, addressed in a court of law. We must engage the court of law to stop the government from taking advantage of Garenago in their own territories. I hope this show was has opened some eyes of Garifuna and we now encourage you to continue educating yourselves to all of the um, options we have to correct the course where we went wrong. That's very important and it's important, even more important, that we do it together and that's the reason why 
myself personally, I have I have been back and forth calling for NGC to, to even not exist anymore. However, we must all come together, but if we're going to do it through NGC and stick together instead of for, uh, you know splitting up and forming another organization, correct NGC, but we need them to be corrected. We need them to correct the course. And all this nonsense that NGC, oh, you have to sign up to be a member of NGC. Many of us think that, oh, because we're Garifuna, we're part of NGC. No, that's a lie. Don't fool yourself. You have to sign up. If you have a newborn baby, that newborn baby is not a citizen with the NGC because they haven't signed up that along this uh, path, um, even enlightening us on the ILO Convention 169 and the land rights of the Garifuna people. And I want to um, challenge everybody out there um, to ask yourself, do you think the Garifuna individual is a member of a Garifuna nation, yes or no? And I undoubtedly would think that you would say, yes, we belong to a Garifuna nation. And so ask yourself, what is it that you can do? Right? What is it that you can do to further the cause of Joseph Satwe when he lost that war 797, 1797 to the British who, you know, took away our territory and are continuing to implement policies to take more territory away from us? Ask yourself what you could do. I'm the leader of the Garifuna Nation. I invite all of you to give me your, you know, undivided attention and support as we move forward in this struggle. Thank you, Marta. Thank you, Robert. Over and out. Yeah, um, for the closing statement, um, the Hapapo was established as an educational platform for our people on all the different aspects of the culture as well as whatever challenges face us that hinder our growth as a people. So, with that said, and